Good morning. Good morning. We have the great honor and privilege to start our service again with the worship through baptism. Hand it right. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all hear me okay? We've yes. got a new little system here. It seems to be working good. good. Welcome to everyone this morning on this, this beautiful Lord's Day. As Brother, Brother Bill just said, we're going to start our service this morning with, a, with an act of obedience and baptism. Amen. 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 Sunday evening service um, will be about baptism and its role in the New Testament church and uh, the things which are commanded along with that. And so we'll go into great depth at that time. Father, we first and foremost, God, give you praise. God, for who you are. Lord God, for salvation that's available only through you, only, Father, through what your Son did on that cross. We thank you, Lord, for his precious blood. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness, Lord, that only the shedding of that blood can give. Bless our time today. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Again, as I said, what a wonderful, great way to start a service. Baptism. <coughs> a picture of Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and also a picture of what takes place in our hearts when we make that decision to accept Jesus in our hearts and lives. So welcome to our service this morning. Welcome our visitors, our home people. We pray that you come to worship God. Glorify Him, praise Him, renew our spirits, give thanks for what He's done, what He did for us this past week, and also look forward to what He's going to do for us this coming week with expectations. If we don't leave this place on Sunday morning with great expectations, then where is our Christianity during the week? That's right. Because God's going to open the door for you somewhere. I guarantee you, He will open the door for you. And it's up to us whether we're going to be willing to go through that door. We've got to have the strength to do that. If you're a visitor, though, we would like for you to find a visitor's card and fill that out. Uh, they'll place an offering plate later. We're going to worship our tithes and offerings. <clears throat> and everybody's got hacking and coughing and stuff going on, including me. But uh, I guess that's part of living in this part of the country. It's either that or up where Pete and Myrna are, they're, building, they're going to build a snowman come Monday. So <laughs> it's one of the other. Uh, just a few announcements. This coming uh, Saturday will be the uh, fundraiser for the children and youth uh, fundraiser campaign, the uh, chicken sandwiches. Um, again, if you can put that order in today, uh, give them kind of an idea of how many to cook and what to cook, how many series to make. But you don't have to, but it's a good idea. We do encourage you to do that. Also tonight, Fifth Sunday Sing. 
um, the group glorifying him. That's uh, Trixie Leonard's family. And she'll be singing also with them also tonight. Um, please come tonight. Invite your friends, your neighbors, your family. And worship through music tonight. Glorifying him. There will be a love offering we'll taken after service. And also a finger food fellowship. <coughs> And the fellowship hall at the service. So make your thing your favorite finger food and some banana pudding. Whichever. So I think that's all basically the uh, announcement this morning. Uh, so if you would uh, let's stand together, sing our call to worship. Number 12, you need to use the hymn book. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Hymn number 12. <coughs> time, we still have that. And you cross the aisle, welcome each one to our service, or turn it away. Right, you will do that. Welcome to our service.
on Sunday morning only? No. No. It's really, as they'll say, you know, the 24 7. You know, we can worship God anywhere we are. It's our spirit that leads us. Sometimes we have to wait till Sunday morning to worship. But anywhere we are, we can talk to the house. You never know when something's going to happen. You've got to go put something on your heart. You need to do this. You need to pray for somebody. You need to help somebody. You need to say something to them. You, look the spirit. you never know. That's right. My Lord is near me all the time. If you need to hymn book, we're going to sing all three verses. We're going to kick the nine. That's truism. My Lord is near me all the time. We're going to sing all three verses together. Go on and say the same. In the lightning flash across the sky, it's my heat that I see. We're going to now worship at the time of um, celebrating and recognizing the seniors down this year. Um, Caleb Brown, come and do that. In, he in heaven. <laughs> and the baby. And the baby. Congratulations to our seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, I was informed we don't have her here, but Jamie Seeley will be graduating in this class as well. Uh, two yeah. members of the West Washita band, but I'm going to recognize this lovely young lady standing here beside us, uh, Katie Malley. We all know her as Kit. She has uh, just done a phenomenal job. Uh, 
kind of talk to her to share with you her ambitions and her future goals. She is graduating after uh, achieving some great honors with the West Washtenaw Band of uh, being a part of the honor band for the last four years of high school. She <coughs> plays the trumpet and is excellent at it. She sang in a choir and has a beautiful voice. And because of her hard earned achievements, she is going to Louisiana Tech University with academic scholarships, tops, as well as <laughs> she'll be playing in the Louisiana Tech University band. And we'll also be giving some financial help from them as well. So she's going to live on campus playing the band, and she wants to be an instrumental music educator and also going to possibly try to minor in psychology for future goals and ambitions to be a therapist, as well as be involved in band and some type of leadership. Amen. A bright mind, a bright head on her shoulders, but ultimately a beautiful heart. Uh, my Heather and I have just had the privilege of mentoring this young lady and look forward to the future and what it holds for her. Uh, she has stepped up and become a wonderful student leader in our youth group. She is actually going to work on it. We're, we're planning this summer for her to go to youth camp with us as a chaperone for the first time. So she gets to embark as an adult in that student leadership. But I, I just, I know God's going to do incredible things for her. She's been wonderful. Um, definitely pray for her. You'll, you'll get to throw it pretty soon, so don't worry. Not, not <laughs> uh, her graduation is May 8th, as you see in your bulletin, at ULM Coliseum at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Don't show up that early. <laughs> uh, 7 p.m. But how you can pray for Katie is, is her college experience. Uh, she's embarking off of West Washtenaw campus onto a larger campus with a, a student base that is worldwide. Uh, students come in and out all the time, uh, just needing to know who God is. And I have a lot of strong faith. Heather and I have a lot of strong faith in her to be able to to share that gospel in those places of need. Um, so definitely pray for her. She's going to have needs in college. She's going to have prayer needs especially. Um, I will close this out and stop my rambling <laughs> by saying one thing I, that I love to mess with her all the time is Get her plenty of mac and cheese. <laughs> she, she loves it. So. <laughs> I think Katie did want to share a little something that she'll do, so I'm going to let her have it. So as far as my major and declaring a minor goes, whenever you think of an instrumental music major and a therapist, you think, wow, those things are completely different, completely opposite ends of the spectrum. How could they ever be together? And my thought process behind this is Whenever I become a band director, I would like to be able to better understand the minds of my students and be able to help them further in different ways mentally and just be a mentor to them, not just the person that teaches them band. And as far as a therapist goes, I would love to be able to help people out, but also show them how therapeutic music can be. So I'd love to just be able to join those two worlds together. And I think all of y'all, some of y'all have known me since I was about, what, two and a half? And Y'all been with me forever. And some of y'all I've known recently, but you are all such a blessing. I thank you all for this this morning. Amen. Forgot the most important part. <laughs> Jeremiah 33.3, a verse that was shared to me as a graduate of high school. It says, call to me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which you do not know. A lot of times seniors use the verse Jeremiah 29 11, but this verse has always spoke more to me about graduation, more to me about a future that is unknown because we can rely strictly on that. Call to God. Anytime, no matter whether we claim it as good or bad, call to God. He's going to have the answers. going to pray with you real quick if you'll join me as we pray over her. Father God, we just bow before you now. Thank you, Father, for this, this shared moment that God is to give you the glory. Thank you, Father, for just the past several years of knowing this young lady, of being a part of her life, of getting to lead her, God, in a way that grew her closer to you. Father, she's about to embark as an adult in a, in a world that is prepared to attack her. But God, she knows you. She trusts you, God. And Father, may she turn to you in those times of need. 
Father, we give you all the glory and honor. We just ask, Lord, that you lead our steps and that we trust and be obedient to your will. Father, be with this church as it continues to pray over her. And Father, may our needs be met. We love you, Father. We pray this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 One final thing. The church would like to present you with a new study Bible. Yay. And it does have your name engraved on it, including it. <laughs> First told that she liked to have money, but now four or five cases of mac and cheese would do also. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, uh, Katie. Uh, find the uh, outlook on life that you have. Uh, one of those since I've been here also, but a uh, spirit led lady, good head on the shoulder. Going to sing for us a little later on also, but just the fact that she wants to help people and not just to choose a career that, that, to make money, but to, to, <coughs> that, that movement to help people in, in later life. Yes, music can be soothing to your soul. Like Robert says, laughter is good for the soul. Laughter is good for the heart. So is music. So uh, congratulations, and you'll be hearing part of her a little later on as she sings for us. But once again, congratulations to Jamie also. Next song is going to be Holy, Holy, Holy. That's hymn number two. If you stand and sing all four verses together. Hymn number two. Holy, Holy, Holy. <coughs>
Thank you, Miss Charlotte. I don't know the name of that, but beautiful. Thank you. I'll find out in a minute. Let's pray, please. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we know that you're a great God, a loving God, a merciful God. We love you, and thank you, Lord, for loving us. So much, Lord, that you sent your Son to die for our sins. And through his shedding of his blood, we have plan of salvation, the way to heaven. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We can come and worship you together, glorify your name. We lift you up in front of each one of us. We knew our hearts and our spirits would come and weep. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Once again, if we can worship, God, offering time. We praise you, take the gift and glorify it, bless it, multiply it, use it for your kingdom, bless the giver. I'm also thankful this time for the seniors that recognize for Katie, Janie, that you lead them in the years to come, Lord, that they look to you for guidance, look to you for their strength. Once again, Lord, just thank you for the day. We pray that your spirit be free to move among our hearts. Convict us, make us closer, bring us closer to you, that our will will be closer to your will. And also to move in hearts so someone may be here today that does not know you as a special, that they would take you today and be the day of salvation for them, ask you to come in their lives and to live in their hearts and in their spirit and their soul. Pray that Katie should keep coming down and sing for us. For the cow and brings a better life to us. <clears throat> in all things, Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and glory. For Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
I don't know had I ordered a song this morning that it would have been any better than what you just sang. It goes with our text perfectly. Um, you know what one of our problems is as is, is Christians? And I know we have many. But one of our problems as Christians is getting still before Holy God and praising Him for His greatness. And you know, we, we, we say we do that, and I'm not saying that we don't. But we do that, shall we say, in a sense of let's hurry up, get it over with, and move on. Yeah. And we need to get on our knees before a holy God and praise him for who he is, for what he's done, for what he's doing, and what he continues to do, not just for just a little bit, but for quite a bit of time. Amen. Praise is a result of the meditation <laughs> of the Word of God. Amen. Katie, congratulations on graduation. Congratulations on the, the different honors that you've achieved <coughs> um, this past week in, uh, in, in watching some of the things that, that her mom put on Facebook there, her singing in the, with the jazz choir and their playing and things of this nature. God has given you a talent. You didn't just happen to get it. Right. God Amen. gave that to you. Amen. And I thank you for the time that I've been here and certainly well before the time that you've sang here at this church in glorifying Jesus Christ. God is calling her, and I'll use that term, into the vocation that she spoke of. But if you heard her, you heard something else in the sense of it was not just to be a band director, right. but influence. Amen. We need Christians in places of influence. Amen. Amen. Certainly as teachers, as doctors, as lawyers, as plumbers, it doesn't matter where you are or what you do, but we need Christians in those places to stand strong at all times. To not compromise, to not go hide from the things <coughs> of this world. Yes. And I want to challenge you as a church. You already know this, and you already know this is your responsibility. But you need to be praying for this young lady. Because as she goes to school, understand, Satan's desire is to destroy. That's right. And she will be attacked spiritually. But you know what the Word of God tells me? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Turn your Bibles to the book of James chapter 1. While you're turning there, I do have a, a quick announcement. Things have uh, kind of been a blur for me, shall we say, for a while. But we have a, another fundraiser next Saturday. This next, sunrise, next fundraiser is for the children <coughs> here at this church, the younger ones and the teens as well. Both will be going to church camp this summer. Um, the month of June is going to be crazy busy. Yeah. Okay? And so another reason for you to be praying constantly 
for all the events of this church during that month. We start off with VBS, then we have the Children's Day Camp, and then the Teen Camp. And uh, so be in prayer. But next to Saturday, we're going to, to have the barbecue plates, things of this nature. I know you know that. What I'm bringing up to you is, first of all, asking you to forgive me and my failure, too, with everything going on. Um, and I know some people, but as far as we need desserts. <coughs> we need desserts, whether it be groups of, of, of cookies or easily sliceable cakes, and they'll be putting that in the little packages. Um, we need folks to do all those type things. Uh, but if, if you are able to bring those by Wednesday evening, and um, I'll be here all day pretty much Thursday in and out, and then, uh, I can, but anyway, we need to get that on the road. And so we're looking forward to, 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 that, to that time, to that event. James chapter 1, and because of what we just heard in Saul, we can say that this passage that we are reading, as we'll start our, our reading in verse number 13, we covered this ground last week, but there's a couple of um, just, just comments that need to be made as we move into the, to the latter part of this text. But this passage, shall we say, is about God's greatness. As, shall we say, opposed to our weakness. <coughs> now, we realize the Word of God teaches us that when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, that we receive a new nature. Okay? Yeah. Old things are passed away. You know, all things become new. But there's something that remains. Okay? And the Word of God uses the term flesh. We've looked, and that's not the, the skin and bones. Okay? <coughs> But that in a sense is a degree to, of, our, of our old nature. That's why we still, shall we say, uh, 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 fight temptation to sin. Okay? You're not going to be perfect on this earth. No matter how much of the Word of God you learn, you will not reach a point. On, and I know there's a, there's a bunch of yahoos out there preaching this mess. That's right. But you will not reach a point on this earth of sinless perfection. Make sure, you un make sure you understand that. Okay? Yeah, that will not happen. That cannot happen. You will always be susceptible yeah. to temptation in the sense of tempted to sin. All right? Right. You will always. You'll never be above it here on this earth. Right. You can become stronger while you're here on this earth. That's right. And that's what God commands us to do. Yeah. Is to grow stronger daily. Okay, And that's so uh, you know, we grow stronger physically by eating the right foods. Okay? And there will be no comments on that, okay? But we also grow stronger spiritually by a different food, the Word of God itself. And again, the constant. And it's not about how much. It's not about how many books. But over the course of a lifetime, we certainly should gain more and more and more. But it's about what we see, what we read, what we pray that God teaches us as we, as we mull over it. You know what? In a sense, spiritually, our minds, our spirit is much like a crock pot. Yeah. You ever put something in a crock pot and you know, kind of whatever, you just kind of put it all in there and you shut the lid and you turn the heat up? You say, well, Lord, you know, I can remember the first time I ever used a crock pot way back when. You said, well, man, I hope this works. Yeah. And you, you know, you go off and do your thing and you come back in the house after a few hours and whoa. All that stuff is working together <coughs> and it's starting to get to where it needs to get. Y'all hear me? Yes, indeed. And at some point there coming up pretty soon, you're going to be looking for a spoon. You got to test it, amen? Yeah. Look here. You know what? The Word of God, as we study it, as we study it, as we mull it over, as we meditate on it, and again, thinking and, and, and thinking of the application. Thinking how these things fit together. As we study the Word of God and as we mull it over, the word, uh, Holy Spirit of God will remind us of other passages that are very near to you. Certainly we'll see them, see them in our Bible perhaps there, um, but below that verse with a verse in it, and we'll go look at that. And you know what? It's kind of like just going down a buffet line at a restaurant. Yes. 
you kind of start in, a, in, and I know a lot about that. Y'all need any instructions on that? I can, I can teach a class maybe, you know, one night on that. But you know, you go along there, and man, you're eyeballing, you're getting something really good. You say, boy, I can go with that. Yeah. Man, that fits in right there. I got to have some of that yonder. Yeah. And you know what is the Holy Spirit of God is we develop that hunger for study. As we develop that hunger for the Word of God itself, you understand these things start fitting together. Amen. Listen to me. And as the Word of God fits together, you know what God is doing with that? He's building a fence of protection yes. Amen. around you. Because the attacks are coming. This passage that we're looking at here, we've been looking at trials. We've moved into the sense, the same use there in the Greek I told you last week, this word temptation is the same word, but it's the context. You see, God wants to make you stronger through trial. Right. Amen. This old flesh, and of course Satan, his desire is to destroy you. Destroy you. We're studying on Wednesday evenings the book of Genesis. And we've reached a point now after more than a year of chapter by chapter by chapter, word by word by word, we're toward the end of the book of Genesis. Joseph is, shall we say, he is, a, to a degree, he is a prisoner yes. there in Egypt. <coughs> but God's been with him every step of the way. Amen. Yep. From a point of him being 17 years old and taken by his brothers and, and sold into slavery. Moved up through the years by God's hand on him constantly all the way through. And at the point in our study right now, he's second only, second only to Pharaoh in authority in all the land. Okay. God had a will and a desire for all of these things. But one of the things that we'll see before we finish the book itself is there's a passage there, and it basically says this, that... Joseph's kidnapping, Joseph's being sold into slavery, Joseph's being put into a dungeon, Joseph's being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, all these things that said that Satan meant it for evil. Yes. Amen. But God meant it for good. Amen. And you need to understand something. The temptations that you face daily, God is allowing these things. We just looked at these back. He doesn't bring these temptations into your life in, in the sense of enticing you to sin, but he allows them because they are, they are a trial to make you stronger. Right. Satan's desire is to destroy you. But God. Amen. But God means it for good. Yes. You say, you mean to tell me that God can turn such a situation around a temptation to sin, and he can take it and completely change it around and glorify himself through what he does in our life. Yes, That's what you just sang about, folks. Yes, How great thou art. Amen. That's what this song is saying. In this passage that we're looking at right now, that's what this entire passage is saying, is how great thou art. Join me now. James chapter 1. I'll get to my message in a little while. All that's extra. I had no intention of even saying anything. Verse number 13, I'm just going to read through this quickly. It says, but let no man, when he is tempted, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Why? Because it's not, he doesn't have it naked. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away again of his own lust and enticed. Last week we used, we used the, uh, the, the illustration again of, 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 of entrapment, but then the enticed again is the fishing term again with, with, with the colorful baits again, that dangle in front of a fish and things of these nature that draw him. Okay? Verse 15 says, Then when the lust hath conceived, okay, it bringeth forth sin. You see what? Our sinful act that we commit is not just an all of a sudden do it thing. But it originates somewhere. It starts back down the line. We see the process with Eve in the garden. As Satan come to her. And first thing that Satan did, he did two things immediately. He caused her to doubt what God said. And he caused her to doubt whether God was being truthful. Right. Amen. 
Now hold on just a minute. There is none of us here this morning, I don't believe, and just looking at I don't I don't know know you all intimately, but I don't I don't believe there's anybody here that would just say the heck with all this, God's a liar. But you know what? Listen to me. In a sense, that's what we do when we choose sin over him. Amen. You see, we make that choice. Drawn of your own lust, your own desires. We make that decision. We, there's, there's no such thing as us sinning and not knowing. Right. The Holy Spirit of God lives within us. Amen. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. We want to justify our sin sometimes. Right. Right. Well, everybody else is doing it. Those Christians over at that other church, they have no problem doing these things. Which brings up something. About three years ago, four years ago, I had a lady in our church come to me. There in Arkansas, and she said, "Well, you know, so and so, they've been in, they've been uh, they've been visiting our church for some time, but they hadn't been here the last two weeks." I said, "Yeah, no." She said, "Well, said they they came and visited with me and my husband, and they've decided to go somewhere else because you, Pastor, you take the Word of God too liberal, oh, and you say that God does." I said, "Hold on, just a minute. I don't say anything. I just say what God says." I said, let me tell you what their problem is and anybody else's problem that has that stance is, is the God you believe in. Amen. You see, we in this world that we live in today, we, we've uh, quite frankly, in this modern time of Christianity, we've uh, oftentimes, we've kind of conjectured and formed a God in our own mind that's not the God of the Bible. Amen. That's sin. Our God judges sin. Okay. Continuing in verse number 15 says, Love has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. If you say, well, this sounds a lot kind of like the birthing process. This is precisely what this is speaking of. A child, there's conception. And then from conception, there's growth and growth and growth and growth. But there comes a point when that child is born. Such is the case with sin in our life. We are often drawn away, okay, our own lust. But one of the most dangerous things, let me tell you this, and this leads us into a study down the road when we start talking about false doctrine and false teachers. But can I tell you that one of the most dangerous things, one of the single most dangerous things in the spiritual sense or any other is emotion. Emotion. I've had people tell me, I know that I'm saved because, I, man, I just got so happy, so happy. I had goosebumps. Let me tell you something. Goosebumps has nothing to do with your salvation. Amen. I've seen people, and I'm talking about folks that I, that, I, that I believe with all my heart are gloriously saved, get on their knees before a holy God, call on him to come into their heart and save them, and, and get up without a tear in their eye, just a straight face, and from right then that moment on, just keep on keeping on. I've seen people come down. I've seen them leave their chairs, leave their seats, wailing and crying and screaming and stomping. Tears dropping on the carpet all the way down. And I've had people afterwards say, man, she really got saved. Well, hold on a minute. <laughs> Certainly, listen to me. Let's make sure we don't confuse this. Emotion is not shall we say, emotion is not an evidence of salvation. That's right. Now let me, let, me, let me asterisk right there. Let me make sure we understand something here. There should be godly sorrow when we repent before a holy God. Okay. But that don't mean that everybody's always going to know. You see, salvation is determined to be real. Now you know it, God knows it, but it's determined to be real by what you do when you turn around and you leave and go back up the aisle. says, lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished. Paul says in Romans chapter 3, the wages of sin is death. Right. But here we see it says, bringeth forth death. Now, in context here, again, last week we talked about this word death. It's not talking about spiritual death. It's not talking about physical death. It's talking about with that sin as a believer, 
we have separation from a holy God. Right. Okay? In the sense of what? The relationship, the father-child, father-son, father-daughter relationship doesn't change. You either belong to him or you don't. And that's forever. And that's one time. But you can get out of fellowship with him. Right. Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart. What does that mean? That means unconfessed sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He will not listen to your prayer. Now, I've had people jump all over me for preaching that. But that's what the Word of God says. That's right. You got to get right with the Holy God before He'll hear your prayer. Amen. Even as a child, your fellowship there's there's a, there's a, there's something that's come between you. Now let me say this, and this is for another time. This death, it does extend, can extend. We won't go there now, but it is possible for God to kill His child because of sin. That's right. And yes, I've known of a case where it to happen. Yeah. The reason I know it is because I was involved in that situation and counseling that young man there for, for a course of about three months <coughs> over what he was doing. And I told him he needed to repent before the Holy God. Amen. And that if he didn't, it was dangerous. Sometimes this thing goes on for years and years and years, but in his case, it was less than 90 days God killed him in the front yard. Oh, my goodness. Before it happened, I looked to my wife, and I told her, and I said, if he doesn't repent, God's going to kill him. Now, I'm not a prophet, but this is what the Word of God says. That's right. When you bring dishonor and shame to your Lord and Savior, there will be judgment. Verse 16, a simple, shall we say, short verse. And we are so susceptible to hurry up, read short ones, and move on. Right. It says, do not err, my beloved brethren. This word err here means, again, in the sense that don't you be blaming God for your sin. You're the one that chose to sin. Right. Don't be, do not be deceived by Satan in the sense that you couldn't help it. That somebody else caused you to sin. Take responsibility for what you do. Amen. Okay? Yes. And, 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 and you get off of that, you're in error. Do not err, my beloved brother. Then we see, verse, basically, verse 17 and 18 is the culmination of this passage. Okay, This is, earlier in this thing, we've been seeing us, our faults, our goodness, which Isaiah says that our goodness is what? <coughs> Filthy rags before the Lord God. Amen. So now we we'll get to the, the, the icing on the cake. Y'all notice how many references I made to food when I'm preaching? <laughs> Make the food. I, why is that, Brother Bill? I don't know the answer to the question. Wisdom. <coughs> Here's the icing on the cake. Our weaknesses. God's greatness. God's greatness. This is what we're looking at, verse 17, verse 18. It says, every gift, every and every perfect gift is from above. So, so you see, you say, well, this is taking a whole new change. No, it's not. Because initially we're talking about the, the, the temptation God sending him. And what he's telling us here is he's not capable of sending it. But what he does send to you, the gifts that he gives you, is good. It's perfect. Okay? Not lacking. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Now, the word good here is one of the most misused words, overused words in the English language. Understanding this, we, well, this is good, that's good. I'll never, well, hold on a second. But we need, and, and, and that's fine, but what we need to understand is the word good, when it relates to God, it's not the same. I love, here I go again, I love sweet tater pie. <laughs> of all everything, that's my number one favorite. Now, don't nobody go be making no pie. But listen to me. 
Mm -hmm, that's good. But that is not the same kind of good that refers in Scripture to God Himself. A first thing is an emotion based on my taste. The other is part of His character and who He is. Goodness in, in the sense of perfection. Amen. Absolute perfection. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from thee. And then we see this term, the Father of lights. This is an actual, this is an actual name for Jehovah God. This term here <coughs> was an ancient, shall we say, recognition of, by, the, by the Hebrews, by the Jewish people. This word was an, was an ancient term for who God was. Father of lights, again, in the sense that the, the creator the creator of all things. Amen. Okay? Not talking about that light right there. Primarily, he's talking about the sun, the moon, the stars. Okay? Now, I know the moon does not emit light. All right? But it reflects, okay, from the sun itself. All right? And so we listen to this as this moves forward here. It says, And cometh down from the Father of lights, the creator of all things, with whom <laughs> is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, Y'all remember a couple, three years ago when we, when we had this, uh, this solar eclipse? And, 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 you know, and I don't know how much was visible down here. There was just a wee bit visible of where we were in Monticello. And because we wanted to eat at a restaurant in Little Rock, we went and got these little welder shields and all this other stuff. So we, so we drove all the way to Little Rock and set up there in that parking lot for about three hours. Now, Caleb, boy, he's, he's looking, looking hard, hard, hard. Miss Alice, boy, she's looking hard, hard, hard. Galen's looking all the time. I'm looking hard, 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 but I'm looking over here at that Chewy's restaurant. Amen? <laughs> but what happened is, is whenever, whenever this eclipse took place, the brightness of the sun was darkened. And what the Word of God is saying here is that with a darkened God, with a weak God... He cannot, it is not possible for him, her, it, whatever it is, to provide these good things. But in God, there's no variables, there's no shadow. There is no point where God changes a sense and is unable to do. Now, listen to me. You can look up there, okay? We, you know, you see it, you see this, uh, you see this, this example that God gives us all the time. You see that little sliver of the moon? Next day, the sliver will be a little bigger. And go all the way up to full, and then it'll start right back down, and you have a period when there's no moon. Okay. The point is this. God is immutable in his character, and he's not, he does not change. What he says yesterday is still the same as that. Now, listen. Listen. There is different applications depending on context. Okay. We'll get into that later on. But here's the point. The God that sits on his throne right now is the same God that James is referring to way back then. He's the same God that what? That Daniel <laughs> worshipped. He's the same God that did not allow those lions to attack him in that lion's den. He's the same God that Adam and Eve yes. spoke with in the garden. He's the same God that created this earth in six literal 24-hour days, Y-O-M, going. Amen. Same God. He's unchangeable. He's unmutable. And let me tell you something. I think sometimes we don't think enough about the importance of that. But I can tell you here this morning, we need to praise God for just that fact alone. Amen. That he is unchangeable. Because understand this, his love for you, his love for me, is based on the initial fact that we were undeserving and he desired for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Yes. That's not going to change. That can't change. Praise the Lord. Verse 18 says of his own will. Begat he us. This is regeneration. Begat he us with the word of truth. It's the Word of God that the Holy Spirit of God takes upon our hearts Amen. to convict us. Okay. It's not a yearning to be better. 
But it's the Holy Spirit of God taking the Word of God to convict our hearts of salvation. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now, would you listen to something carefully? We see, we see constant references <coughs> in the New Testament to the, to the term or, or, to, or, or, or to the principle of first fruits. When God created this earth, <coughs> after the sixth day, the Bible says that God saw what he had made, and it was what? Good. It was good. Everything was absolutely perfect. Yes. 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 You know, in every church I'm at, I always find somebody I like to pick on. <laughs> I got a volunteer. John Johnson, you stand up. <laughs> stand up. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Now, y'all just hold on just a minute. I'm, I'm about to wind this thing up, but there's something crucial that's about to take place. Now, there's other people in this room could answer this question, but nobody can answer it like so. <laughs> Okay. Now, other husbands here, you, you just be proud of this pick on you. <laughs> so, 365 days a year. But don't, don't get wishy washy over here. You got you to toe the line. Because you got to make it look good here. How close to perfect is Johnny Johnson? <laughs> She gave you a turn. We just right know we're not even close. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. Hold on. Hold stay on. there. You stay there, John. <laughs> this goes for everybody here. Okay. Okay. Right. Everybody here is saved. But, but God, y'all hear me? Amen. But what is God saying here in the first fruits? Because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross. And because of Johnny's recognition that of his guilt before holy God, yes. and because of repentance, and because of his trust in Jesus Christ as his substitute, pay for his sin, and receiving Christ as his Savior, you're on that same dotted line. We need to understand something. God sees. God views. This is grace, folks. God views Johnny Johnson as good. Very good. Because he sees him through the righteousness of his son Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for love. Yes. Yes. God, we're 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 incapable. We're incapable of, of, of doing anything whatsoever without you. Yes. Oh God. Father, I've used Johnny as an illustration, but I know that Johnny would be the first to say here right now that I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it. Yeah. But Father, we thank you, Lord, for wanting to use us. We thank you, Father, for your protection. But God, we have to start with praise <coughs> you for how great thou art. God, I just pray right now, Lord, in the trials that we face. Father, the tests, even the temptations to sin, God, that we always, 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 God, that we be a spiritually alert. We be watchful. God, I pray that our hearts would burn, God, to prepare for events that we've not yet faced. Prepare by studying your word, by meditation, by prayer. That sweet relationship that we have with your son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Personal relationship. God, you know our hearts. You know, Father, even as a, you know our, our, our sin. You know the sin that we've not confessed on. That we may, may be struggling with or running from you. God, I pray if there be any Christian here this morning that, that, that's in, shall we say, doing those things, God, that we yield the convictions of your Holy Spirit immediately. We know that's your will. 
Father, there be anybody here today that's lost that cannot say, I know for sure that if I die today, I'm going to heaven. Dear God, I pray, Lord, that you not allow Satan to hinder them in any way right now. Dear God, but that they recognize before you that they're lost, they're guilty. And God, that they understand that there's only one way to go to heaven, only one. They can't be good enough. They can't clean themselves up. Turn it over and you do will do nothing. But they must first see their guilty. Yeah. Second, they must see spiritually by faith that Jesus Christ died on that cross for them personally, yeah. for their individual sins of the past and of the future. Yes. But they must be. Your Holy Spirit, God, will convict that heart to, to not want that guilt, not want that sin, and spiritually to turn away from it, asking you, God, to forgive their sin and come to heart to save them. Not everybody that's in this room that's ever been saved did that. Be recognizing those things. Father, I pray. <coughs> God, we praise you, Lord, for your promise. When you tell us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. God, every heart here, Father, as we have this hand in the table, I pray, Lord, that we act upon the things that you've shown our hearts. And you're coming down this aisle, and you're on our knees, God, at this altar. If there may anybody lost here, God, is speaking to me, let them open your word and show it. God, I pray that not a single soul would walk through those doors into that parking lot and go home. Rejecting what you've shown my heart. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.